The first time that we walked into an Earth ship, most of us had been up early since that morning and we had been on airplanes and then we got into a van and drove three hours and we got out of the car exhausted and in a new place and we walked through the door and it was like we were in another world. <laughs> Throughout our time in Taos, we were not only taught technically about what it takes to live off the grid, but we were also immersed in the culture of the community as well. The first thing you notice about the Earthship community is the amount of ecological awareness that there is. In fact, it's necessary to be aware of your environment in order to understand and operate your home off the grid. You'll always know your cardinal directions because your home is placed in an intuitive way to create passive solar heating. You'll know your weather because it affects you and the amount of energy that you're able to take into your home through solar panels. You'll know the weather because it affects your water and um, the amount of water that you're able to collect in your cistern that goes to your sink and your shower. You'll understand what happens to that water after it goes down the drain. Um, it goes to your toilet and it goes to the planter outside in the hallway. There's a kind of closeness to life in our ship communities where you understand the life cycle of everything that's in your home, whether it be your energy or your water or the waste that you make in your kitchen, it all has to go somewhere. And when you're off the grid, you're the person that's responsible for that life. There wasn't a single person we met in the Earthship community who was unaware of how their house was built and what it was made of. Most were even a part of the building process themselves. The house, you'll see there's just tons of planter space. In the greenhouse, we've got a cockatiel and a parakeet that just fly around. We've got three turtles in the pond and goldfish and tilapia. And there's just detail abound in this building. Um, it's a showcase, you know? We want people to see that you can have a mansion and it still be completely self-sufficient. Um, this is the phoenix. To me, it's a perfect example of how earthships represent living within an ecosystem. Take the planter, for example. The house can't function without someone living in it to use the sink and the toilet and provide gray water in order to make the plants grow. And the plants in turn provide life and food and nourishment for those living in the house. This relationship of reciprocity is something truly unique to Earthships and something that I found to be most important within the culture of the Earthship community. I'll never forget the day we were working on the construction site and um, we got the opportunity to meet a lot of new people, a lot of different people, people that had come from all over the world for the Earthship Academy, um, for their field work, and people who were just volunteers um, who knew about their ships and believed in them. And when we walked up onto the site, there was this woman um, who was helping build a truss at the time, and she was simply a volunteer who had come um, to work on the project and we walked up and she had this huge smile on her face and she was just she greeted us with such warmth and she said oh you've come to be part of the solution um, and I won't forget those words because it to me it represents the kind of passion um, and the kind of commitment that you find in um, in the Earthship community you know 
people from all over the world who come because they really believe that Earthships are a solution and that Earthships are worth their time and worth their effort and um, you know they get to put part of themselves into it, um, part of their creativity, part of you know wor the work with their hands um, and the people in Earthship communities are simply people who live with their heart.